Hey guys, welcome back to Field Notes. Uh, we are now in early March and the weather is starting to feel more and more like spring. Um, that means that our indigo season is coming to an end pretty quickly. Uh, we've actually only got two more surveys left after today and so uh, we should be wrapped up with that uh, early next week. Uh, we're also wrapping up the eDNA part of the project and so I'm out here today uh, going around taking our last soil samples and collecting our cameras off both the drift fences and the burrows. So this will all be wrapped up this week and uh, next week we'll be starting um, some turtle projects. We've got some spotted turtle work coming up, got some box turtle work coming up, and also a little bit of amphibian field work uh, sprinkled in there as well. So we've got a pretty busy spring ahead of us. Uh, spring's always pretty busy. We've got a lot of projects going on. Um, we got conferences. We actually just got back from Sea Park uh, this past weekend. That is the Southeast Partners in Amphibian and Reptile Conservation. It was the annual meeting, uh, which was really good. Uh, we presented on some of our research. Uh, I presented a poster um, with Peyton on the eDNA work that we've been doing for indigo snakes. And Houston presented on flatwood salamander work. And we're just able to connect with fellow biologists, collaborators, and uh, some of our old uh, technicians from Orient, uh, all of which are out uh, with other agencies, other nonprofits doing really cool conservation work. So it was a really great weekend, uh, but we're back in the field now. We've got to hit the ground running because we've got a lot of stuff to do um, in a number of different places in the state. And uh, our next two months are going to be pretty full. But for today's video, uh, since we're kind of in a transitional period between projects, and uh, we've got a lot of stuff ramping up, and these projects are basically, you know, ending. I'm just going to show you a few more highlights from um, the cameras that we have set out on this eDNA project, and just show you a few more things that we've detected with those. Um, we've gathered well over a million photographs from these cameras over the last four months, and so we've got a lot to go through. So I'm just going to throw a few of these photos up at the end of this video. Uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, really seeing a cool diversity of animals using these burrows and on these sand hills. I also wanted to briefly mention something we found uh, last month on indigo surveys and uh, it's something that's pretty significant. Uh, we got not one but two hatchling indigos and you know when I say hatchling that means from uh, hatched in the summer of 2023 and so these snakes are going to be you know probably about seven months old. So yeah, that's just something you don't see very often. Uh, the last time I personally was on a survey that turned up uh, indigos of that age class was December of 2016. So that was my first indigo season with Orianne. And uh, I had to wait this long to find, uh, find another one, and I got two in a day. So that was really special. That's a day I'll never forget. Um, and, you know, just to see that age class on the landscape... Uh, is very encouraging to know that, you know, there is reproduction happening. Um, we do frequently see snakes that are about a year and a half old um, in their second winter, um, but they're significantly bigger. And, um, you know, this small age class is the, that's the, that's the time in the indigo's life that we know very little about. And uh, so it's great to see that on our sites. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any video, um, but, you know, you see the photos. Um, really tiny snakes, super cute, um, and hopefully next year we'll see them uh, again, or in the coming years, and they'll be much, much bigger. But with that, I'm going to leave you with photos from our camera traps and drift fences, and so I hope you enjoy the little slideshow, and I'll see you guys next month.